Hello and welcome to my review of the Imperial Knights Armager Helverins from Games Workshop. A set of these will cost you £45 and if you're very lucky the set may include enough sprues to make two of them. <laughs> it's just a dig at my previous uh, unboxing of these that, that I did pff, last year sometime. I um, unboxed these and was missing legs and a body. Uh, so got straight on to Games Workshop. They sent me out another box. And uh, if you have any issues like that, um, please do make use of Games Workshop and in particular Forge World's um, customer service. If you would like a pair of these at a discount, uh, please do use my Element Games affiliate link down below and you save yourself 20% 20, 20 off your Warhammer goodness and you get some Element Crystals and uh, you're supporting this channel and all of this daily content, this whole night month content. So back to the review. Uh, these Armager Helverins, they kind of came out of nowhere um, about five years ago. They came off of the back of the Warglaives, which I'll show you in a moment, um, which were kind of short ranged, I say short ranged, <laughs> effective range of 44 inches. They were more short range than these, put it that way. These don't have any uh, kind of assault weapons um, in close combat melee weapons, and um, they are only long range support. Um, I really don't know why this one has a melter gun, it's just, it's just absolutely silly. Why would you? Yeah, they're armed with auto cannons, but not any old autocannons, armager autocannons. What's amazing about these is they get an extra 12 inches. 12 inches makes a lot of difference, so you've got 60 inches here to play with. These things have an effective range now of 74 inches. They can hop about the battlefield running at 14 inches and fire both of these two because they have a special rule um, whereby they're allowed to do that. If you've built the armagers, these are going to be, yeah, pretty much the same. Um, the kit is slightly different, like the armor panels are a little bit different here and there. And so are the shoulder pauldrons and of course the weapons and the heads are different. But the carapace weapons are the same. You get the he you get two options, the heavy stubbers or the melter guns. Don't know why you'd pick the he uh, melter guns though um, in this instance. And there's a bit of posability in terms of which leg to put forward and um, what pose you want the arms in. You can magnetize them and so on. So let's have a little look at these. Um, really cool looking. This one just laying the, the fire down at something uh, close. Um, for instance, I think I might have mine aiming its weapons um, a bit higher up uh, for, for the others that I've got planned. Um, but yeah, they look quite cool. Uh, the heads are, yeah, a little bit different, more more Mechanicus style um, than, uh, you know, the armatures. This one, I don't know why he's got his, he's gone up like that, but maybe he's just scored a kill. Maybe, I don't know. These night pilots, these these ones are, yeah, ferocious, aren't they? Ferocious. Um, but yeah, comparing them to the armagers, here is an armager I made earlier. And yeah, they're height-wise obviously the same. Um, you know, it's up to you which ones you prefer. I do prefer the look of the Helverins just because they, they've got these big altar cannons and they're very shooty. Um, but uh, yeah, they both look uh, really cool. And um, yeah, next to all the Questorist Knights, which is one of the next comparisons, but first we'll just show you them next to a Moirax. So here's a Moirax. I haven't yet built the uh, dual conversion beamer uh, Moirax that is currently being built as we speak. Um, but um, for that review, I will of course be um, uh, bringing in these Helverins and showing you, um, you know, what uh, kind of long range death really looks like. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, the Helverins next to a, a Moirax. Compared to a uh, Questorus sized knight, a fair bit bigger. These still come up to almost the head, yeah, almost the head, I guess, of a normal Questorus knight. Um, and then next to a Serastus knight, which is right here, gives you an idea of where they stand next to one of these. And they're probably up to the hips, I'd say. Um, but these are one of the tallest knights if we don't bring in the uh, Porfarian over here. And the last size comparison I always like to make is just with um, the usual suspects. So Sly Marbo, which represents like a guardsman, a space marine, and 
the primaris. Primaris goes up to the knee, I want to say, the second joint, um, but fails to measure up to the hips. Uh, so again, as I said in the armature review, um, it, this is a prime example of uh, just how big the smallest knights are in your knight force. They're going to be towering, towering over a, a lot of your opponent's minis, um, you know, the standard troops. Okay, so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for the Imperial Knights Armager Helverins um, for Warhammer 40,000. You'll find them in your Knight Codex. Uh, they are a power points cost of a 9 and a points cost of 170 points per model. The Armager Auto Cannons are free, but you will have to pay for either the Melter Guns or the Heavy Stubbers. Bearing in mind the Melter Guns are 17 points each, so that's an extra 34 points for just a measly two shots whereas the heavy stubbers you're getting six shots for eight points hmm and much further range i would rather keep these shooty knights shooty so for 340 points you really can't go wrong with these ones the stat line is exactly the same as the armager warglaives i will repeat it though so they start off with 12 wounds and they've got strength of six, toughness seven, four attacks, leadership eight, and a save of three plus. When their wounds drop to between seven and 12, their movement speed is 14 inches, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill three plus. If they've got between four and six wounds, their movement speed is 10 inches, weapon skill four plus, and ballistic skill four plus. And when they drop all the way down to one to three wounds, their movement speed drops by half to seven inches, weapon skill is five plus, and ballistic skill is five plus. The unit contains one armager helverin, it can include one additional armager helverin or two additional uh, for a power level of plus 9 or two additional armager helverins for a power level of plus 18. Each armager helverin is equipped with two armager autocannons and a heavy stubber. So this is the main reason you'll get these is the armager autocannon and each one has got two of them. They're a heavy 2d3. So probability wise you're going to be getting six you're going to be getting four shots each. That's eight shots in total. If you are really lucky, you could push it to getting 12 shots of strength seven, AP minus one, but it is damage three. And you ignore the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing this heavy weapon. So there's the special rule there. You're ignoring those that penalty. So you, so you can fire at things from 60 inches away at a three plus, and you can pump out potentially 12 shots in total. You can equip them with the heavy stubber on the carapace, which is a 36 inch range, heavy three, strength four, AP zero, damage one, and the melter gun, which is 12 inch, assault one, strength eight, AP minus four, and a damage of D6. And if the target is within half range of the weapon, you roll two D dice when you roll two dice when inflicting the damage with it and discard the lowest result. The war gear options, any model may replace its heavy stubber with a melter gun. Abilities, iron shield, models in this unit have a five percent vulnerable save against ranged weapons and explodes. Each time a model in this unit is reduced to zero wounds, roll a dice before removing it from the battlefield. On a six it explodes and each unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. Vehicle squadron, the first time this unit is set up, all of its models must be placed within six inches of each other. From that point onwards, each operates independently and is treated as a separate unit. Keywords, Imperium, Imperial Knights, Questor, Allegiance, Household, Vehicle, Armager Class, Armager, Helverin. So there you go. That is my review of the Armager Helverins. They are, yeah, they're just fantastic. You know, they're very survival, much like the Warglaives, um, with their save of 3+, plus, their toughness of 7, their 12 wounds, and their invulnerable 5+. Plus. I think they're more survival than the Warglaives. The Warglaives um, can certainly pump out... Um, some decent damage if they get uh, you know six strength eight shots if they don't and they only get one shot each it's only going to be what it's only going to be um, two shots of strength eight um, it's still an all right um, distance away but just the range output for the warglaive is is just yeah severely lacking um, you're best off with the warglaives either running around trying to pop tanks or heavily armored um, uh, vehicles or units uh, and also getting into close combat but but just remember that in close combat they do only have a weapon skill of three plus and they don't have an invulnerable save in close combat so they may well be vulnerable whereas the helverin they can just sit back 
um, at 60 inches away with their effective range of 74 inches and just keep pumping out the same number of shots. Well, it might differ from turn to turn, but you get where I'm coming from. They can just pump out so many high strength damage shots. Yes, your enemy is gonna get saves from them, but it is still arm penetration and minus one. So even against Space Marines, they're gonna be saving on a four plus um, from all of these shots. And against the armies with weaker save, saving throws, like Orcs or Eldar even, or Tyranids, it's really, they're really gonna cause a lot of damage. Even against other Knights, the strength is very good. And against normal knights, they're going to have to reduce in their save by one too. What do you guys think of the Armager Helverins? I think they're a fantastic addition to the Armager uh, kind of class, along with the uh, Warglaive and the Moraxes. Please do put your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.